Do I need a mic or? Yeah. Wait, oh, sorry. Thank you. That's good. Yeah. I need it already. That's for the... It's working but only for video recording. Ah, perfect. Okay. Okay, let's start. Okay, another quick reminder that the speakers are not working, so the speaker has to speak louder and try to be as quiet as possible. So, uh, now it's time for the next presentation. We have uh, Henning, one of the main contributors of the uh, Camaillo project, giving an update about uh, what happened lately inside the project development and the ecosystem. Henning, thanks for coming and your floor. Thank you, Danny. Okay, yeah, so just want to quick uh, give you some updates, as Danny said, about yeah, what happened in the last year, and ba basically, in Camaillo. No? No, it's so it works. Okay, good about the agenda. Yeah, what is Camaleo? I will quickly go over it. You mostly know um, what's new in the yeah last release 5.2. What changed in the development in the uh, Git, Git master branch? How how we call it? Um, some yeah updates on the contribution and community process. Um, yeah, a bit out, an, uh, outlook about the release planning. Um, the next major events that we are planning. Yeah, and of course, some, some, maybe one, two minutes for questions. Okay, yeah, as Dennis said, I'm uh, one of the major contributors uh, in Camaleo. I'm with the project since 2007. I'm a core developer of the project, also a member of the management board, and I work yeah, um, in all over the place in core and databases. I did a lot of work, um, many, mo many modules. Um, yeah. I work as an IT manager, but I do also consulting for Camaleo and uh, yeah, voice over IP services. Um, what is Camaleo? Camaleo is a carrier grade zip server. It's developed since 2001. It's especially useful for developing yeah, large carrier grade platforms for voice over IP um, services, real time communication services, WebRTC nowadays as well. Um, it's also used a lot for scaling yeah, application servers, PBX servers like uh, free switch, asterisk, um, and other services. Yeah. We have an active, uh, really active uh, development community. Last yesterday, I pulled some statistics from GitHub. So in the last month alone, we had over 220 commits from 20 different authors. So this shows that we're really uh, a broad project. Um, we are open to, to contributions from, from everybody. Um, we yeah, have a really good um, process now running as well with uh, GitHub. We integrated uh, 30 pull requests in the last month. Um, and yeah, we did also, Daniel did uh, two maintenance versions in the last month. Um, 5.2 is the yeah, recent development branch, uh, the recent, um, sorry, um, stable branch, and 5.1 is the last one before that. Yeah, Camaleo uses uh, a fairly traditional design, how to say. We have a small core which does all the heavy lifting related to mem memory management, locking, transaction stuff somehow, um, and then over 200 extension modules for everything you could imagine, interfacing with external um, databases, um, with code um, in an, on other places, APIs, etc., routing modules, support for zip, trans uh, yeah, zip RFCs, uh, all kind of extensions. What happened in uh, 5.2? So some, uh, yeah, a lot of things were changed in the in the core. We had a development um, hackathon, development workshop last autumn um, in Düsseldorf, sponsored from Zipgate. There we worked a lot on the module interfaces. Um, we unificate, uh, we did the big unification of the module interfaces. Um, yeah, Camaleo was developed since 2001, so there were different flavors of module interfaces. This were unified. Um, a lot of work from Daniel, Daniel especially were done in the yeah, um, Camaleo scripting support. And now we, we also support a lot of modules for modern scripting languages like Python or Ruby or some other languages, JavaScript as well. 
So you don't need to learn the Camilio scripting language. You can use the scripting language where maybe you are already familiar in or have already some code in. And then, of course, a lot of internal parameters and APIs were extended, were, yeah, were added. Um, you find the complete list here in our wiki. Um, we also added a lot of new model modules. We can now do accounting in JSON. Um, also extended the application scripting support. We have now Ruby and Python 3 as well. Uh, Redis as a new NoSQL database was added as well as a database interface. New IMS modules and another yeah, JSON model module for, uh, for, for the presence area. In total, um, more than 55 um, modules were also extended. Um, then we have uh, extensions in the control commands, a new testing suite. Again, if you are interested in all the details, have a look to this URLs, uh, URL. You find a complete list several pages long for all the extensions that were done. Okay. Just some, some details, what happened um, in the module interfaces, in the module interface. So in case you in your company, maybe you or yourself have some proprietary modules which are not in the uh, upstream for some reasons, this is the new module interface. Um, just uh, yeah, can look to uh, to the modules. This is the TM module, just an, as an example. So what we have, what we did was ma mainly yeah, changing the order of some function calls and do do some unification there. Um, again, if you if you want to have a look, also look to the modules. It's rather straightforward. You can also look to the commits uh, in last last autumn um, how this was done for for all these modules, just to give you like a small documentation in case you, are, you need to work on that in, in preparation, maybe for, for integrating modules that were done internally. Yeah. Some stuff which is uh, done at the moment, um, like for, my, um, for myself, um, also from Daniel. Um, so I did uh, a lot of work in the memory management area in the last uh, months. So um, I did a complete review for, yeah, for all the mem memory management uh, functions, function calls in the core. Um, yeah, fix some errors uh, around the way. So if you allocate memory, Kamalio use an internal memory manager. Remember that every allocation can fail, every function call can fail. You should look an error in this case. Um, we introduced also some helpers, which you can use to to yeah output a generic logging message. In this case, um, would be great if you could use it, especially in new functions. Um, you can also use this to output some additional information. Have a look to this commit if you need some, some example how to use it. There will be some more cleanups in the core uh, related to mem memory management. Some years ago, Daniel did some changes there. We have some, some redundancies in this area, and I will continue to work there, just do some cleanup um, yeah, that we have uh, a less complicated core, I ideally, um, can also better that we can also better understand it, better maintain it. What we do on a regular basis, with, with something that is also done um, for the last year, I would say, also done right now, we use some external tools, the tools that um, yeah, scan, do some static code analysis in the, in the core, also in the modules. And if we find some errors there, that library calls or like system calls um, are not uh, implemented properly, we will, of course, fix this. Um, more on the functional side, what um, happened in the uh, development branch, most interestingly, is probably the addition of the RTP media server module. This is more or less the first time that really we, uh, that we add some media handling to Camilio. So this module can be used to, to play some media um, directly from Camilio without the help of an external um, yeah, server like Asterix or FreeSwitch. It uses three streamer um, basically and then you can use this to play play announcements it's still in development there will be some bridging functionality uh, added soon from the author also um, so if you're interested in this give it a try um, of course it needs yeah some testing I think it was added just ad added some some weeks ago yeah there's a new security related module SecFilter um, that can be used for blacklisting 
and other other topics. Um, Kamalio supports now which redirects, which this was added, I think, so many days ago. Daniel did the merge. Um, it was contributed from an, from an author as well. And then we have, of course, the usual extensions. I just listed some in the uh, record routing module, in the um, charge, charge um, accounting module, edge table, third variables, pipe, etc. Core DNS latency was uh, added for logging that we have, uh, yeah, can do this performance related logging also for DNS. There were several bug fixes in IMS, and this is again the, the link to the wiki if you're inter interested in the details. In the details, um, it's not that uh, much there in the wiki at least because we are still in the beginning of the development phase. Um, 5.2 was released last um, November, I think, so or on not more than two months. Development happened, um, maybe two and a half. It is a Christmas <laughs> a vacation. Yeah. So more to the community side. Um, so 2018 was the, the year of the code of conduct in many <laughs> in many projects. There was a big discussion, for example, in the Linux kernel community about this uh, change. So um, we also um, yeah, decided that we want to introduce a code of conduct. Um, we yeah, did an extensive discussion in our management list um, about this um, topic. It's a political topic for some people, of course. Um, so we we choose uh, to base our code of conduct on the Debian code of conduct, which is a rather old um, code of conduct, and a lot of development uh, happens also for Debian. So this was a, a choice, um, a good choice for us. Um, I just did a, a quick summary about the the headlines. <laughs> um, it applies to communication in the project scope, online or offline. Um, but only in the project scope. We don't care what happens outside the project. This is a difference to some other code of conduct, but in my opinion, an important difference. So um, if you want to have a look to it, it's in the um, yeah, JIT repository, of course. Um, if there are any conflicts, if there are any uh, discussions that are arising from the code of conduct, the yeah, committee to address is the Kamalio Management Board. So far in the last month, Nobody or nothing happened <laughs> in this regard. Huh? The last huh? yes. last years, had nothing happened. We established it in the last October, as I mentioned. But before that, of course, the Kamalio Management Board was available all the time. Nothing happened in, in the last years. We don't need to ban somebody from the project. Um, now this shows as well, I think, that we have a, a really good community structure. That um, yeah, But nevertheless, it's good that we have it, we are growing, we're having now um, more more, more yeah, offline meetings as well. Since uh, seven years we have the big Kamali World Conference, for example. For a conference it's also a bit, uh, somehow a good practice now to have a code of conduct. So yeah, we want to also add, add here our part. Yeah. Some changes in the last years or some, some extensions that were done was also yeah, to formalize the process more to how to contribute to our project. Um, Daniel did a lot of work here. Um, we, using GitHub as many other projects, there is a contributing guide which is several pages long, which gives a, a lot of important and yeah, helpful information um, that you don't need to run into the usual problems. Um, how the commit message uh, should be formal, uh, formatted, etc. Um, in every case, if you have questions, you can yeah, contact our mailing lists. You can also, um, if it's a delicate, maybe security-related question, um, there are also other channels, but the, we want to have it public, we want to have it open, if possible, ask on the development list. If you um, yeah, want to implement a major change, a non-trivial change, maybe a new m major module, or some complicated core changes, you should also ask um, first on the on the development um, yeah, list. Maybe there's some overlap with some other development. Maybe there's already an, an module which should be extended instead. So it doesn't hurt to, to ask before. Um, we are pretty open with regard to the uh, commit access. So if you develop a new module, the module gets reviewed and the module gets accepted, then 
you will get pretty pretty soon also uh, commit access to yeah to, to to maintenance on this module. We are pretty open in this regards, maybe more open than other projects. And remember, of course, if you have um, a questions, a question, if you report a bug, if you open a pull request and you don't get a reply, maybe in one two weeks, mm, just send a friendly remain, re reminder. Maybe maybe somebody is in vacation or is traveling to a conference like FOSDEM, so yeah, people people maybe take some days to to re respond, of course. So in case you want to get uh, yeah your code in Camilo. Um, how is our release structured? Um, how we do releases? We use a time-based release schedule. A major rare version is released roughly every 10 to 12 months. We have a development phase of six to eight months, and then uh, yeah, a code freeze and testing phase of roughly two months. Uh, yeah, depending a bit on the vacation, we, we, we usually avoid to to have, um, of course, a release in the middle of the summer vacation. So this changes a bit over the years. And then if the stable release is out, we do a minor release uh, roughly every one and a half to two months, depending, of course, on the bug situation. If there are some critical security issues, maybe we will do it a bit earlier. If the release is a bit older, maybe a bit uh, longer term. The release date for the next major release, 5.3 probably. It's not uh, fixed yet. We will do it probably in autumn, I would say. <laughs> um, but it's not fixed. Um, I think we will do a... IOC conference and probably also to discuss on Carmel World um, about that and plan. Um, yeah, as as I said, we do mainly our development coordination over the email list, um, but sometimes also IOC conferences. Yeah, in the case you want to get more involved into this community, the next major community event where we also would probably do a developer meeting is uh, at Carmel World 2019. This will happen in, again in Berlin in the beginning of May. Um, yeah, so in case you, you are interested, there's still the possibility to schedule or to propose a talk, I think. So in case you want to present about your project related to Carmelio or related to web, to web RTC, to real-time communication, until the middle of February, I think somehow the uh, yeah, call for papers, call for proposals is open. So please consider this as well, would be great. Okay. Um, no. So that's all from my side. Um, I think we have maybe three minutes for questions. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Henny. So, uh, easy view of the last years, more from change of uh, policies, but uh, also from the new features. There are a lot of them, as Henning gave a link there, you can follow. So now if you have some questions about uh, the project, uh, or uh, I'm also available for answering if it's something uh, more dedicated to my part of code. Any question? Oh, there? Perfect. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, Hello. I, I will speak louder. As a company, we use your product and uh, we submit everything back, of course, but how do you want uh, more involvement of companies that use your product? Like, how can we help you to maintain your project better and things like that? So, how, uh, the question was how you want the company using the product to get involved more. Are yeah. there any way that you would suggest that they follow? I mean, it's good if you can participate in the community, of course. Um, if, you, if you have some code that would be useful, um, you can, of course, contribute it and then maintain it, of course, would be great. You can also um, yeah, work on, on, on core parts or on maintenance tasks if you have resources or if your company want to yeah, um, sponsor this. This would be really useful because, like, bug fixing extensions this is not something done which this not, not something that can be easily done with uh, like consulting work because customer normally pay only for new functionality and not for maintenance so yeah support with these maintenance bug fixing infrastructure work is always uh, great you can also if we want to if you don't have much time maybe more money <laughs> you can also sponsor of course the the events Carmelio world is an event for example you can sponsor there are other ways also for sponsoring if you if you have some infra infrastructure, we, we also